Hello, hi everybody. Welcome to part two of The X-Files. The game. <laughs> well, actually the title isn't called The Game. Uh, one thing I didn't mention in part one, which I obviously should have, uh, obviously you notice that the icons are pretty glitchy looking and they don't look like whole intact images. I am playing this on the PlayStation 2. I don't have a PlayStation 1 anymore. Uh, since PlayStation 2 can emulate uh, PlayStation 1 games, I never needed my PlayStation 1 anymore. And, uh, you know, I just, I sold it and I still, I have a PS2 and I play all my PS1 games on my PS2. And, uh, we're gonna need to go in this drawer here for extra items. But, uh, on the PlayStation 2, the X-Files doesn't emulate well. For some reason, the images look all glitchy and uh, distorted and whatever. Because not every game that's on the PS1 turns out that great on the PS2, surprisingly. This game isn't horrible on the PlayStation 2. I think it's still playable, but, uh, yeah. That's a lockpick! Good for getting in through locked doors. We also got binoculars, which we can use to see from far away. And uh, we have night vision goggles, so we can see in the dark in a green vision. A camera, in case we want to take pictures. We can actually take pictures of cutscenes, in fact, just in case you want a good, good picture of somebody. A flashlight to look in the dark. Again, it's like night vision goggles, only with a small ring of light, not the entire room. An evidence kit, so that any time we have to find something at, at a crime scene, we put all the evidence into that little burlap bag. And now that we know all that, let's go to the hotel where Mulder and Scully were staying down in Everett. This is the map screen. Basically, if you, you can always go into the PDA and to the map, and this is how you travel around. You just go from red dot to red dot. Pretty straightforward, really. Can I help you? Let's look to the left first. A blue one and a black one and a yellow one and a odd one. Your little girl is beautiful. Thank you. She's three. I hope her father's Asian. <laughs> Would you like a gumball? Thank you, I didn't have a nickel. How do you not have a nickel? What the hell are you doing here without money? I'm gonna kill you. What are you doing? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Skinner. I just uh, reacted badly. My bad, my bad. Why would they stay in Everett instead of Seattle? I have no idea. Maybe they were being budget-minded. Hope there aren't any surprises waiting for us in their rooms. Well, they've surprised me before, but I know what you're saying. They didn't have any enemies, did they? Everyone has enemies, Agent Wilmore. Why didn't they contact our offices before they began their investigation? Actually, that's one of the questions that I'd like answered. Agent Wilmore asks a lot of stupid questions that the person he's talking to wouldn't possibly know about. I don't want that. <laughs> and I just felt like giving him my badge, but... Uh, you sure I can't help you, gentlemen? He wasn't having it. Oh, good. Uh, a Fairfield Zoo brochure. There's a lot of background stuff in every level that you can just look at and read and... I don't know why they put all this attention to detail in here, but uh, there it is, a brochure. Anyway, let's, uh, make, let's get her attention by ringing the bell. Please don't do that. Do you know how many people do that with me sitting right here? No. Well, you're not the first. Now let's be a dick. What are you, a child? I said don't do that. <laughs> Uh, I love making Wilmore a jerk. We're looking for information on two FBI agents who checked in here. Can you show me some identification? We're looking for information on two FBI agents who checked in here. Look, I told you, I need to see some ID. 
Basically, you have to go into your inventory, get the FBI badge, and show it to people. Sometimes you can show it to them twice, even though you don't really need to. What's the matter with you? We're looking for information on two FBI agents who checked in here. Mm-hmm. And their names would be? Agents Mulder and Scully. Oh, yeah. They paid for a week in advance, room three and four. Did you notice anything unusual about the two agents? Um, the guy was kind of spooky. Other than that, no. Did anything unusual occur while they were here? Not that I can remember. Do you have the make and license number of their rental car? Sure, it's on the form, assuming they told the truth. Could you write it down for me, please? We don't really need this information. Would you take us to their rooms, please? Sure, come this way. Here we go. This is his room. She stays next door. Thank you. I hope there aren't any dead bodies in here. I got finals coming up next week. <laughs> God forbid. You can get in and out through here. Did they ask you to unlock those doors? Did they look unlocked? No, they didn't. Doi. Thank you. We'll uh, let you know if we need anything else. You know where to find me. A bitch better not be giving me any more sass. I might have to backhand her. Why don't you start with Mulder's room? I'll take Scully's. Alrighty, so let's investigate Mulder's room. He has a newspaper dev devoted to a giant conspiracy about a UFO in the northwest of America. and You can read the entire newspaper if you want. It's only two pages long, but still, it's a lot of words. <laughs> Again, there's so much attention to detail in the X-Files game. You can literally just pick up random newspapers and just read them and whatever. He loves sunflower seeds. This much is obvious. Looking at his case files, you don't really see anything uh, worth mentioning other than they went to a warehouse called Majestic and uh, something about a railroad connect. We're going to find out all this information later, but uh, it's interesting to look at now, I guess. Mulder likes booze. <laughs> what is that, Smirnoff? Smirnoff and orange juice? I don't know what Mulder's drinking habits are. Again, I'm a casual fan of the X-Files, but I'm not a diehard. I couldn't tell you his favorite food or whatever. For those unfamiliar with the show, Agent Mulder is the alien believist type of guy. Believist? Is that a word? But uh, he, he, he believes in extraterrestrial life and whatnot. And, uh, you know, he has a big fascination with it. While we're here, let's watch TV. That seems like a little out of date. <laughs> Whatever. I don't see anything out of the ordinary here. I can't decide if that's good or bad. Also, in Mulder's room, I made a point to look at the uh, telephone because by looking at the telephone, we unlock a new dialogue option with uh, Mr. Skinner here. And this is Scully's laptop. We want to take this. We cannot leave this level without it. And it looks like too many people have been trying to log into it. They don't know the password, yet they keep logging in. What the fuck? Seems suspicious. Yeah, let's watch this TV, too. Why not? Guess they got one channel. <laughs> one really goofy fucking channel. You can actually read that Bible, too. I just wanted to show that she has the Bible in there, but it's a lot of pages, and I wasn't going to go through them all anyway. So yeah, as I mentioned before, looking at the telephone in Mulder's room unlocked the telephone option. You push the circle button, and you leave the conversation box to go to the telephone to ask about that. So yeah, worth talking about. Should we check the outgoing calls? That's a good idea. The clerk will probably have a record. How long have you known them? Four years now. 
I've known Mulder longer than that. I guess it's been uh, almost six. It would be helpful to know what case they were working on. Yes. Yes, it would be helpful. Listen, I'd appreciate it if you didn't uh, refer to them in the past tense. Huh? Agent Wilmore, Captain of the Obvious. You know, it'd be swell if, if uh, Mulder and Scully didn't disappear. <laughs> yes, yes, it would be helpful if they didn't disappear, wouldn't it? Wilmore asks a lot of dumb questions in this game. <laughs> what now? Holy shit, woman. You can give that book to her because it belongs to the hotel. That's where that went. That's supposed to stay in the lobby. Agent Mulder has some interesting reading habits. You can also ask her about the telephone, and uh, you need to, otherwise you can't leave. Well, you can leave, but you'll not get anywhere. Do you keep a record of outgoing calls? Sure, for billing purposes. Could I get a copy, please? Great. Give me a minute. I want you to know you're putting me behind. Sorry, I don't mean to bother you at work. Funny. But I do mean to ring that bell constantly just to annoy you. So there's two phone calls that uh, was made, one to Washington, one in Seattle. If you try calling the Seattle phone number, they never pick up. There's like, uh, they just don't answer, you know, you get nothing. But uh, you can call the Washington phone number. So I figured I'd pull out my cell phone, I memorized the number in my head. And uh, let's find out who they were calling in Washington. Goddamn cell phones. Old 90s cell phones. Can't have an iPhone, can they? Hello? Who is this? Agent Wilmore, FBI. Who are you? I asked you first. Look, I work for the FBI. Uh, sure, okay. Why didn't you say so in the first place? <laughs> Great job, Wilmore! Hey, I'm with the FBI. Uh, who's calling? I... I'm with the FBI. <laughs> Classy detective work. Uh, you can try calling the number again, but he won't answer for a second time. What's your major? I'm working on a law degree. Can you remember anything that might help us? No, I'm sorry. They checked in and left that evening. I didn't see them after that. Also worth noting, the guy we called is uh, Frohickey. Frohickey is a character on the show. He's part of a trio of characters on the show that Mulder and Scully tend to talk to for uh, conspiracy stuff. So, uh, yeah. Don't think I didn't know that. <laughs> I love the FMV footage in uh, the X-Files, though, because when you're looking at stuff just walking around, the, the, the background is so retarded. Like, uh, look at this car in the background that just constantly goes right. <laughs> And then it goes left. Ooh. <laughs> like, I know they're trying to build atmosphere for this game, but when you have a car that just keeps going right and then left and then right and then left, it kind of doesn't work for me. <laughs> Anywho, uh, welcome to Seattle. We have three locations we can go to. The field office is where we started the game off, and that's where Agent uh, Cook and Shanks are. There's a crime lab where we can put our evidence, like, give our evidence to, but we don't have any evidence yet. Other than Scully's laptop, I guess. So uh, we're going to go to the apartment because I want to show off where Craig Wilmore lives. And uh, also, we need to find out where the phone number that was called in Seattle belongs to. What the hell's with TV in this goddamn world? <laughs> it's all just goofy like 50s movie or 20s shows like what, what's going on here once again there's a lot of extra details by uh, looking all over uh, agent Wilmore's house on his couch you can see uh, Barbara stream at wooden floor oh, divorce papers brilliant again Wilmore is divorced and this is just some backstory to explain it uh, well, not that it explains it, it just, you know. Just showing that Wilmore's rebounding from a divorce. According to the three decisions that you make in the opening of the game, you can actually uh, decide whether they left on good terms or bad terms, even though they'll always be divorced. Uh, if you answered indifferent 
for some reason, then Agent Wilmore is still on good terms with his wife. I don't know why. That's just the way the game is. I love this picture. You zoom in and there's more words. You zoom out, there's less words. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but whatever. These are all his uh, daughter's drawings. His daughter doesn't live with us, and we never see her. We never see uh, his daughter or his ex-wife, but again. Backstory! <laughs> and God, these drawings are terrible. Can I just say that? I know she's like five, but that's, that's ridiculous. Anywho, folks, uh, we're going to look up that phone number and see the rest of Wilmore's apartment in part three.